there was a small boat towing, towing at the time, pulling a big boat. <laughs> Sometimes you have this, and then Prabhupada said, just look. How is it that this small boat can pull this big boat? <laughs> I mean, the big boat is actually so much more powerful. And this small boat is not, you know, well, it's a powerful small boat, but it's still so small. <laughs> It's, well, it's because the big boat has turned off its engines. <laughs> so if we turn off our engine, then the less if we, if we turn off our energy, <laughs> if our energy supply or our engine is turned off, yes, then some other lesser powerful entity or, or energy can take us and pull us in, in, in any direction. <laughs> so we, we have to start our spiritual energy, <laughs> spiritual engine, <laughs> and turn to Krishna. And of course, that's so when we turn to Krishna, then we, then we start to get the power so that we can separate from the material energy, or separate from the attachments to the material energy, because the question is how much we can actually separate from this energy that we act in as long as we're in it, of our attachment. And then here's Okay, so why do we become so entangled? One sense here is, is that the entity is the living entity who is exploiting the resources of the material infer inferior energy. Maybe it's an interesting exploitation. They say maybe nowadays people are so, or the whole society is so explo exploitative. <laughs> yeah. Because in the worst case, they don't, this uh, diet is utilized or exploited. We can, and utilize sounds a little bit softer, <laughs> not so exploitative, it is just utilizing, but in any case it easily turns into exploitation. The question is where the border goes. <clears throat> so this this tendency to exploit the material nature is mentioned even here in the Bhagavad Gita from the very beginning, it's the very nature of the living entities entering into this material world, then in one sense to, so to say, exploit the material energy. So then it, so that, so that comes back in the modern context, where of course our power, you know, due to our misuse of our God-given intelligence, instead of using it for self-realization, we use it for sense gratification and make all kind of arrangements for enjoying the senses. Um, so we are exploiting the material energy, or the human society exploiting the whole setup. But uh, we are exploiting inf the inferior nature. The, the stronger exploit the weaker. It's like something like I don't know. <laughs> I mean, this sounds. I can't really give a good example. Whether the colonial, the colo colonial colonial, what do you call it, um, empires. <laughs> and they went there and, and took control over the less advanced people in Africa or whatever, India. <laughs> and just thought, you know, they, they were some other power. They took control of those who were less powerful, at least materially speaking. <clears throat> and then started to exploit. So we can say that is the more powerful exploits the, the weaker. Or utilizes or commands around. So here we have, so it's originally that so the, the, the soul exploits the material nature because the material nature is inferior energy, therefore the soul can exploit it. Of course, then we get entangled in its complexities. You become endlessly entangled in its complexities. And of course, that's maybe also, we see the colonial, um, how to say, empires, they couldn't really stay in the colonial position forever. <laughs> like the British Empire, where at one point very quickly crumbled together. The Roman Empire, well, it lasted for quite a long time compared with our modern societies, it was a long period, um, quite long. But it's still, it's at, at some point it comes to an end. It's, it's the, the, the time of 
superiority of uh, exploitation and so forth. <clears throat> so in that way we go in to exploit the material energy, but in one point we become entangled by complexities and we, 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 we so say become exploited by the material energy, you know, we become entangled and helplessly tossed around by material science and ambitions. But then here is so we are more we are superior to the material energy, but we are inferior to the supreme supreme energy, the supreme energetic. We are the energy, and Krishna is the source. He is our source. He is energetic. But the interesting, because Krishna is not in that. He's not. Ex his nature is not exploitative. His nature is loving, cooperative. Sense. It says, yeah, come here and play with me. Because we, we, have, we, have, we sort of have to surrender to his command. Because we can say, command of the material set up. We have to surrender to that. But actually, Krishna, who is playing on his flute in Vrindavan, is not really interested in exploiting, <laughs> commanding around. He won't just. He has fun. I don't know if he just went to have fun. <laughs> he's, he has fun. He's play. He's Leela, where he's interacting with all the different kind of living entities, in a loving, in a caring. Of course, with the demons, it gets heavy. Uh, how is it? Uh, I say, surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly, so the demons will be killed him, so then he gets <laughs> so it's back. And the devotees who surrender to him, he lovingly cares. So he's not exploitive in that sense. He doesn't want to exploit. Uh, he is, that is not. That's Krishna. <laughs> of course, we are part of Krishna. So that's explained. Well, it was explained. One thing is what. <clears throat> okay. The statement in that verse quoted. Um, and I believe it's from that. Okay, eight, ten, eighty-seven, thirty. I think that's it. Prayers by the personified Vedas. Um, so he said, if the living entities were eternal like you, uh, eternal and all pervading like you, then they would not be under your control. The point is, even though we are superior energy, still we are under control. <laughs> okay, yes, I'm superior to man, but still. I am control. I, there is there is limits how much I can do, and we may try to go beyond the limits. We may expand the limits, <laughs> how far I can see, or how far I can travel, or how far I can hear, and whatever. And expand my power to see into the space, or see into the molecules. But still, there is a limit. So, uh, ultimately, Krishna is the one who has put the limit for us. <laughs> It's a certain board. We, or we also allow to see as much. We only can see as much as we are allowed to see. May we only allow to understand as much. We are only able to understand as much as we are allowed to understand. And then it's a, the Maya's curtain is <laughs> covering our, our vision. And then we see now this is the truth <laughs> electricity. <laughs> Computers. Yes, yeah, see, yeah, see, it. There's it. I saw it on the internet. <laughs> and of course, the internet now becomes you can't really know what's what's true, false, make, fake. You can't really ascertain what's what's really true. What you see there sometimes. And of course, then you see even the news. You may think is you don't know really. Everything becomes so confusing that we don't know really what is now the truth. Really, what is really happening? <laughs> Can't really say <laughs> because there's all different information from different sides. Okay, so the point is, we only see, we are only able to see as far as we are allowed to see, and then, so then we become we be able to think this is all, or we take it very seriously. So here, the Bible time is is trying to allow, <laughs> trying to empower us to see more. So to say, see. Get the full picture. Well, we're getting the full picture. Maybe it sounds kind of simplistic, the whole thing. There's this eight material element, and then there's a. But 
but then, uh, then there's a living entity. But this is very important to understand because it's with this in the background, then when we look at these things around us, then we get a different picture. With this, um, how to say, knowledge, with this um, paradigm, with the paradigm, with the paradigm. We have some, we have some kind of, some, some map we navigate according to, so to say. Oh yes, now there's a soul, and the supreme soul, and of course the supreme soul is going to come in in the, in the picture also here. When we did it already come in. No, he's only speaking of living after this, okay. <clears throat> but there's a soul, and there's, and there's a matter, and there's a spirit, the living entities. Who is trying to explore it? And these living entities are eternal. They're superior energy and they're eternal. But they, and they are, they, but they're not eternal and all-pervading like Krishna. Because that we, okay, we're eternal like Krishna, in a way. But we're not all-pervading like, like Krishna. Because we can say the living entities are all-pervading in one sense, spreading out all over the place. But as individuals, we're certainly not all pervading. We're not even, I'm just sitting here. Avitana <laughs> Prabhu sits there, and Matari sits there, and Prabhu's there. Uh, and we're sitting in this room, and, and you know, what's going on in the house now? And outside on the road, we move it on the other side of the town, or something like that. It's ignorant. We are ignorant of. And we, we don't even fully aware of what's going on, going on in our body. <laughs> we, 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 we know ourselves. How is it food digested? How is the heart pumping? And all these kind of things. It's just going on automatically. So actually, how much do we know? Or how much do we see? Okay, we are, we are not all pervading in that sense. We are not all pervading. But the Lord is all pervading. And he is the supreme eternal, we are part of him, so we we, are, we can say we are sharing some of Krishna's pervading nature in this room, <laughs> in this body. We are giving light to the body, <laughs> consciousness to the body. And thus, as long as that connection is there, the body works. When that soul goes out, and the super soul, there, then it just starts to dwindle and die very quickly. It goes fairly quick. All the functions stop, and of course, then other functions take over. The functions of destruction. <laughs> the what? The fungus takes over <laughs> and breaks down the body very quickly, very quickly. Okay. Um, we are we, we are limited. We, we are. We're pervading a little bit, but not too much, and we are, we are, we are, we are eternal. That's interesting. Um, well, we're pervading a little bit, but Krishna is supremely eternal. We're eternal because we're coming from Krishna, because Krishna is eternal. Man, Krishna pervades everything. <laughs> and okay, so, so thus we are, we are under Krishna's control. And then he says here in this, that verse, but if the living entities are accepted as minute entities of your lordship, then they are at one subject to your supreme control. Okay, we're not equal to Krishna, we can't compete with Krishna. We are under Krishna's control. And then real liberation, so therefore real liberation entails surrender by the living entities to your control. And that's the surrender will make them happy. But that is, we can say, we, this in one sense is argument with impersonal, his philosophers. We just realize we are Brahman, and then we are eternal, we are all pervading, and you know, we, we, are, we become the Supreme. When we say we don't become the Supreme, we are subordinate, constitutionally subordinate to the Supreme. And when we accept that position, then we can be happy. When we falsely to try, when we try to take a position that is not ours, we will not be happy. So I don't know, if lady trying to be man, but of course that nowadays happens. <laughs> then try to take, 
do all kinds of things to, to kind of try to change things so that you will fit them better. Because maybe, maybe, I don't know, okay, that's another discussion. Uh, but the point is, when we find our position and accept that position, then actually we can be happy, then we can be at peace. Okay, my, now I'm at home. <laughs> so usually the concept of a home is a place where you, you're at home, you're at peace. You can be, whether, whether you're very happy, but you can be at peace in your home. <laughs> and hopefully you don't have to compete. <laughs> Maybe the, on the job you have to compete with so many, but at the home you don't have to compete, hopefully. <laughs> that should be a nice, loving relationship. And then we can be happy. But then, then it says there that taking that position of being controlled, of being in our proper position, in that constitutional position only can they be controllers. <laughs> so then when we take a proper position, we can be controllers. But then we say this. Yes, you should be a Swami. <laughs> well, you should all be, we should all be Swamis. <laughs> we should all be Goswamis. We should all be controllers of the senses. So that is something we should control. Our senses are mind, or we should direct it, we should give it uh, direction. Mm. And then it's like I said, the allegory of, in the fourth canto of King Puranyan, he is in his town there, in his town, and there's a park and everything. But then he said, and finally, there's an allegory of the body, the human body. <clears throat> so, one way, we, we should be kings of our town. <laughs> king. king in our body, we should keep our senses and mind under control and direct it towards self realization, serving the Lord. And that we should do whether we are Swami or not the Swami, or whatever external designation we have, that's external designations. Spiritually, we should be in control of our senses and our mind. And then, of course, it doesn't mean that we can all of a sudden change everything around. But it's just that in our proper, from our proper position, ex ex exercise proper control of what is in our... And then, if we can control our mind, if we can control our senses, then we may also be able to properly appropriately control that what we are meant to control in our surrounding area. Okay, yes, so that is... A, um, <laughs> okay, therefore, when, and okay, so that verse is against impersonalism. Therefore, man with limited knowledge who advocates a monistic theory that God and the living entities are equal in all respects are actually guided by a faulty and polluted or broken So it's kind of the final, the final, the final trap of Maya. I'm God. <laughs> then the real thing is, no, I'm the servant of God. Then Maya says, okay. <laughs> of course, she may also, tr she may also tr trick us. <laughs> As Yoga Mahamaya, Yoga Maya, Yoga Maya. So when we, in the beginning, Krishna, uh, well, Maya has a function, and that's to keep nonsense away from Krishna, so they don't come and disturb him in his transcendental healer. But then when, it's, when we pass the test, and we actually properly situate it, then actually that Maya, instead of being a hindrance, turns into Yoga Maya, which actually helps us to progress in the spiritual life. Okay, Hare Krishna. So then we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And be happy. <laughs> Happily chant Hare Krishna, <laughs> serving the Lord from our proper position. That's his eternal service. Okay, we have some question or comment. Uh, uh, recently a devotee was like you know saying in a lecture that uh, uh, th th there is something like in the beginning there is something like pradhan or, or, or mahatattva then you add false ego then you get earth then you add more false ego then you get fire then you add more false ego then you get air then you get then you add more false ego then ether then like that keep adding and you get each of the elements 
uh, did you come across this uh, somewhere in 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 uh, <coughs> Prabhupada saying this like uh, no, I mean it's, it's the false ego what is it the false ego keep, increases yeah keep starting it. from the earth yeah starting yeah either from, either from the, subtle to gross isn't it we usually go for the usually ending with earth. Usually we end it with the earth. We start with the gross. It, it's it's uh, I mean the beginning is just a subtle desire for whatever. Independent enjoyment or control or exploitation or something, or just a desire to be like Krishna enjoying that some just I mean desire is always uh Moses, to catch the desires is <laughs> When, when does it start? Where does it start? So then it starts with desire. And then that's false ego. Well, that's false ego. And the other things evolve. Coming from that, that's how I understand. No, that, 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 I, I, but then, then, of course, the more, the more you become entangled with these material elements, I mean, uh, what do you say, entangled? <laughs> Maybe you're trying to deal with them, but trying to deal with them, you just become what was it, endlessly entangled in the complexities. I like that. <laughs> endlessly entangled in these complexities. We're gonna, we, get, we think we're going to fix things on the material plane. You, you can't really fix it because it's, it's a material plane. We just become pulled around by the free loads. So therefore, we take you to Krishna's lotus feet. We're trying to by chanting Hare Krishna. And then that is uh, the, the solution. Otherwise, we become yes, okay. Trying to fix up this world doesn't work. Okay, but still, there, there's a succession goes. It goes from subtle to gross. Yes. And then the elements of the, of course, what happens? The elements of the previous element, the previous, the quality of the previous element then becomes manifest also in the following elements in the in the. Uh, um, Earth, you have. That's it. Earth. There you have the other qualities as uh, substances also. Let's see how did that work. Force ego, mind, intelligence, ether. Ether. When we get to ether, space, earth, water, fire, air, ether. Then we get air. Oh, that, okay, now that ether, ether there is sound, okay, that's what it is. In the ether there is sound, in the air there is touch, in fire there is form, in water there is taste, in earth there is smell. And in earth all the others are also present. more question otherwise we have a nice opportunity to sing for the Lord a little bit. So the Prabhupada key.